What's up castaways, Miles Away here. So I wanted to do a video today on how I use my hardware synths when producing modern electronic music. Now, a lot of the time I see hardware synth channels, hardware synth producers, they kind of go towards a certain sound, which is a great sound, but it's very kind of, you know, lo-fi, ambient, retro, 80s synth wave. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that at all, but I don't see a lot of people using hardware synths to produce music like I do, which is going to be really bombastic, modern sounding, heavy, melodic dance music. Um, so today I wanted to show you guys exactly how I produce that kind of music with my hardware synth setup. So if you like this kind of video, please remember to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps my channel grow and it helps me know what kind of videos to make. For tons more tutorials, you're in the right place. So if you like synths, if you like electronic music, be sure to subscribe and stick around. Let's get started. <laughs> To start off with, I think it's super important to get something that inspires you to play over. Um, so I'm going to start today with this uh, vocal trap melody. Sounds like this. I really like to start off with something melodic that can really give a lot of kind of like context and inspiration to what you're improvising over. Um, and this is also in C major. Um, the only reason for that is because I'm not the greatest keyboard player. I start almost all my songs in C and then I transpose them after um, to a key that fits best just so I can have the most freedom and not be limited by my playing. Uh, next thing we're going to add is a drone sound and I'm going to use my Moog Matriarch which is out of screen for this. I already fired one up. Um, it's just going to drone the note of C. I love recording over a drone. It's just so beautiful and it inspires you so much. Um, and then final thing we're going to use as our main writing tool, our main palette, so to speak, um, is this patch on the Novation Summit that I absolutely love. Uh, the Summit is fast becoming one of my all-time favorite synths. I'm going to keep it forever and hopefully this patch will show you guys why. that that's probably tip number two is pick a sound that really inspires you to write over because you know it, it sounds silly to say but if you're just trying to write the next you know beautiful tearjerker hit with a basic sawtooth patch it's gonna be hard whereas if you have something like that like great melodies just fall out of that sound right so um, it makes your life easier it's more important uh, more inspiring rather um, so yeah let's get started I'm gonna just start to play that as a loop and start to play over it until we have something we like we can do about that I do have to replace it eventually uh, but I really liked what I had there at the end so we're gonna go ahead and record that in There's a bit of a delay now. I'm gonna try my best to speak, but um, so we've recorded it in. We're gonna quantize it. Fix a couple 
notes. That's the great thing about working with MIDI rather than recording right away. You can fix stuff after and change your melodies. Awesome, so I like that at first. Let's uh, go ahead and copy it to some of the other synths. All right, so next up, we're gonna record in some chords over the drop. To do that, we're gonna need drums. I always like to start with drums, so I, had, I dragged some in from one of my old projects. <laughs> drum kit you like and save it and reuse it when you're starting projects it'll really inspire you and make you have uh, more pro sounding songs faster because you already have a baseline you can swap out the drums later but just starting a song with a finished drum kit really goes a long way all right so now we're going to turn on the other synths and we're going to start turning these into actual chords for a drop Initialize a preset. All right, so now we're going to start the fun part. We're going to layer everything up. I always like to use the Moog Sub Fatty for my basses, so we'll do a bass with that. So when we're working with limited synths here, we can't do a million VSTs. It's important to make each synth have its own role. So the, the Moog sub fatty is obviously going to be the bass. Um, I'm going to use the Korg Prolog as kind of my mid-range mono-ish powerful classic analog saw. And then I'm going to have the Summit be my big washy super saw over top. Now, I still will always layer uh, my drops with other things. If you want to watch that, check out some of my breakdown videos or how I made X drop um, type videos. But for today, we're going to see how far we can get just using these three synths, the chop and the drums.
That's not sounding bad. So next up, before I even record, I will start to set up a side chain loop. So um, I do my side chain in a really interesting way. I'm actually gonna do a full tutorial on this. So for now, I'll do it quickly, but basically I automatically draw in volume, uh, volume curves for each of my kick drums. And then I use that on a master bus channel to really just get the cleanest side chain I can. Create a new group. and created a MIDI pattern. Yeah, so if I wasn't on camera, I'd actually spend an obsessively long time getting this curve exactly right. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna do it quickly. But more or less, what you wanna do is you wanna get a, a volume automation that cuts everything out really fast at first, and then slowly sweeps back up in order to give a really nice movement to the drop and bring the, the power back slowly. So I'll do it right now as fast as I can. As you can see, at first we cut everything out and then down to about minus 20 after a 16th note and then back up. It should sound pretty good. Nice. Yeah, I like that. So I almost never do side chain with compressors unless it's something subtle. I find this way is just much cleaner. So another bonus tip is we can take uh, the same automation and copy it to where the snares are and then do it more subtly there to get a little side chain for the snare. Nice. Sounds pretty good for right now. Awesome. So that's sounding pretty good for right now. Um, we're going to add back in the drone here. It's already in there, but it's pretty subtle. So what I do over a drop, we'll duplicate the channel. And then we're going to distort that drone sound. That's sounding pretty crazy. Let's put an EQ on it and uh, mix that in. Normally I'd spend a lot more time on this, gain stage it properly so I'm not pulling it down 20 dB. Um, but this is more just kind of hopefully to show you guys the basics so you can apply it to your own song. So um, let's drag that into our stack and it should sound pretty good. Awesome. Um, so I'm actually gonna record all this to audio now and then we'll be left with the final stage which is getting a nice sub bass underneath that, uh, a nice analog sub bass. So let's uh, go ahead and record. Sick, that sounds good. Um, now, normally what I do is I would keep these tracks and then I would do more takes, new sounds, layering and layering. Um, again, I really recommend you guys watch my horrors breakdown, kind of shows you how much I like to layer my tracks. Um, but for now, let's say that's done. We delete everything 
and we're just oh, shouldn't have deleted the subbase and we're just left with the um the audio files so um just due to the the lag from recording i'm gonna have to quickly manually put these in at the right spot and voila we have hardware synths in our drop <laughs> Awesome. No. So the final thing I'm going to add in here is just a basic sub base. So for that, we're going to use the Moog sub fatty again, and we're just going to go dial in a sub with the, uh, with the drums. There's certainly, um, you know, different things I like about software and hardware, but man, is it ever easy to get good sounding basses with Moog. Just the most amazing sound. Okay, cool. Let's record that in. All right, Castaways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, yeah, so that is just a very brief overview of how I would start a song with my hardware synth setup, how to start a modern, you know, professional sounding dance song. Now, obviously, as you can tell, this is extremely muddy and very basic. It would need a lot of work. Um, so with these big analog synths, you're gonna have to EQ them. So be sure to look out for the next part of this video series where I'm gonna show you guys how I would EQ my drops to get them sounding punchy, full, bright, but not, you know, not brittle. And uh, yeah, if you like this kind of content, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, helps the channel grow, and I'll see you guys in the next video.